A few weeks ago, we looked at Dapol's limited edition James May gin tanker, which ended up being a bit rubbish. Poor part joints and stiff axles really held it back. However, this isn't the only tanker wagon Dapol has released this year. On my radar was this, the brand new 14 ton Class A and B Air Ministry tankers. They looked good and are a completely new tooling, but at £37.80 on Dapol's website, they were too expensive for me to take the plunge. But at the Allsager Model Railway exhibition, I managed to find one for only £25 from a small shop I'd never heard of, called Along Classic Lines. As these wagons only landed at retailers in June, I thought it was worthy of a closer inspection. I hadn't read any of the specs before I purchased this, and from the outset it's clear that this isn't a normal Dapol wagon. Unlike other manufacturers going bigger on their packaging, Dapol have gone smaller and more compact, with an updated clamshell design inside the smaller box. That makes this much easier to store. I went for a Class A Lobitos tanker, but there are various other liveries and company wagons available. Getting the wagon out of the box, I was hit by a huge surprise, so I'll be addressing things in a different order today. What struck me most was the weight. This is the heaviest two axle wagon I have ever held. On the scales, the Dapol gin tanker we looked at came in at 37 grams. This Class A tanker demolishes that at 73 grams, despite having one less axle. The inside of the tank here is just packed with weight, almost doubling the mass. As if that wasn't enough, I was also unaware that the chassis here is a first for 00 gauge. It is fully sprung. Each axle box has independent springs. On top of that, the wheels are finely profiled and the NEM couplings are kinematic, able to flex from side to side. The wagon also includes chain links for the coupling hooks in a neat little accessory bag. It's quite the package, and we've not even got onto how it looks. The livery detail from Dapol here is top notch. There is a light, sandy colour with red frame and rod detailing picked out over the top. We get blue lettering on the sides and tank ends with red shading, lots of black decal text and even printed builder's plates in detail on the chassis frame. Speaking of the frame, there is a nice, fine suite of brake rigging detail underneath between the wheels, in addition to the separately fitted struts around the tanker itself. The top of the tank features some great separately fitted platforms, moulded pipework and hatch detailing. The tank ends have straight frames this time round, as well as the necessary rivet detailing designed into the moulding. The chassis underframe is also well detailed, with lots of gaps that really showcase the precise construction and design. The only real quality issue I picked up on is a slight scratch over the decals on one side, but this was so minor I wondered if it was a stylistic choice at first. This is a tad unfortunate, but it is thankfully contained to only two letters as opposed to affecting all the decals all over the wagon. With crisp, clear decoration and impressive chassis engineering and weight, this is a hell of a wagon to behold. I wonder if in a long train, lots of these might be too heavy for smaller, weaker engines. The best way to find out is to get this in a train on the track. Here we can see those springs at work again, a find feature I'm hoping ends up being more than just a marketing gimmick. The wheels are fairly free on this wagon compared to the James Gin tanker, but the weight tempers any tendency for the wagon to run away with itself. There's no massive hints of friction here, these wheel sets are of a much higher quality. Here's the tanker in a train of other Dapol tanker offerings. Behind the Class A is another of Dapol's generic six-wheel tankers, an unpainted example I bought in my last Hatton's order that I've now customised. The wheels and free-rolling ability of this one far exceed that of the James Gin example. At the front we have one of Dapol's rectangular tank wagons from pre-grouping days, in the private owner Smith & Forest delivery. Wagon number one survives and is currently stored at the Didcot Railway Centre. At the head of the train, changing things up is my Helgen Class 28 Kobo, number D5705, a much safer option around fuel tankers than sparking steam engines. Let's test those kinematic couplers. The back one has coupled, 
but the front one has not. Let's try a more vigorous approach, as that initial try was quite gentle. That got it that time, but now the Kobo has left the train. <laughs> Let's try and get it recoupled. That failed, thwarted by Helgen's drooping coupling. Let's ramp up the violence a bit more. Aha, that's got it. Now let's test the sprung tanker over some point work. It glides over them more smoothly than the other wagons. The wagon also went the calmest over the baseball joins, suggesting there is something more to the inclusion of separately sprung axle boxes. With those tests done, Let's see how it manages a lap of the board. This wagon just glides over the curving board joins with ease, as if it's drifting in a current. There is no doubt in my mind about how good this wagon is. It's everything the Dapple James Gin wagon should have been in terms of quality and performance. At the full retail price, and even the discounted retailer price of £32 to £33, this might still be on the pricey side. But what you get for your money is undeniable. No other tank wagon I've come across is as finely engineered. On to my final verdict. For decoration, this is once again an example of Dapple's finest. Even in coloration all over, decals are crisply applied and there's no paint bleed or spray to be seen. One unfortunate scratch aside, it was spotless. Builders plates are even detailed and separate parts painted up. I'm 100% happy with this despite that small scratch. Details and features. This delivers on all fronts. The sprung chassis is marvellous, easily overshadowing the fitted and painted details. Chain link couplers were even included in an accessory bag. The kinematic couplers are also worthy of note. All this wagon would need to put a cherry on top of this cake's cherry would be sprung buffers, but there's enough else included on this wagon for you to not notice the buffers are unsprung. This wagon goes all out almost, and I'm all in. Quality. The weight of this thing is astonishing for its size. The build quality, despite treading new engineering ground in double O gauge, is immaculate. Scratch aside, there was nothing here I could fault. It is a top quality wagon and you really feel your money's worth. Performance. This was faultless, yet also better than other faultless wagons we've run. The sprung chassis let this run more smoothly over baseball joins and points than other wagons with less fine wheel sets and solid axle boxes. The fact that this showed up other wagons that perform perfectly is astonishing. I can't award a point plus for this, but if I could, I would. And finally, on to price. As good as this wagon is, at £37.80 it still feels like a tough sell. Three of these from a small retailer to make up a small train would still cost you almost £100. But to Dapol's credit, they've packed innovation into this, and at the retailers you're paying 45 pence per gram, which is much better than a lot of other wagons. At the £25 I paid, I got more wagon than I was expecting at 34 pence per gram. At this price, this feels like a steal. So a retail price of around £30 feels just right for what this wagon offers. I'm thrilled I managed to get it for even less. Overall, that's a score of 5 out of 5, making this an essential item I can recommend to anyone looking for a tank wagon. Forget the normal Dapol 6-wheelers, this is the one you want. So, what do you think of the new Dapol Class A tank wagon? Is the price justified? 
and would you like to see more wagons with sprung chassis frames in double O gauge in the future? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching this rather unexpected review video. It wasn't in my original schedule, but this wagon was too good to not show. I'll see you in another video very soon. Take care.